Hey guys, today what we're going over is how to use an electrical troubleshooting board to teach HVAC apprentices, HVAC electrical wiring, some component identification, how to read wiring diagrams, and then also to perform troubleshooting. So now we're going to get into it. We made this electrical troubleshooting board and the layout for it specifically for those who want to teach HVAC electrical wiring. So we made the, the wiring diagrams, we made the measurement layout, and we also have all of our Packard model numbers posted over at our website at acservicetech.com, and we have the direct URL over in the description section below. So before we get into anything, I just wanna first simplify this for you so you know what's happening. So basically we have our thermostat wiring color code over here, and if you turn your fan to the on position, what's happening is we're using a fan relay to turn that fan motor on. That's a shaded pole, 120 volt blower motor. And this right here is a 12 amp fan relay. And so what we're doing is we're utilizing this green wire coming out of the thermostat to power this fan relay. And this blue wire is the common coming back to our control board. So that's our fan. And then for our heat, we're gonna turn our uh, temperature up to 78. It's 73 in this building right now. And you see that our light bulb is lit this is actually red right now. You could spray paint that red, uh, but what's happening is we're utilizing our sequencer right here to have a timed uh, powering of a fan. So that would signify basically that our heat exchanger is warmed up and now our fan is running. And so say you wanna turn the, the heat off, our fan does not turn off right away in a gas furnace. What happens is our gas valve shuts off, but our fan continues to run and it's basically lowering the temperature at the heat exchanger area. And so there's already heat there, and so you want to be able to blow that heat through the, through the building. So that's why we use a sequencer in order to have a timed powering of that fan. So in the case of heat, we're using a general purpose relay and we're using the sequencer in order to power both the, the light bulb and the fan motor. And now for air conditioning mode, we're using a contactor. And so what we wanna do is we're gonna turn our thermostat on for air conditioning. And so we wanna turn our temperature down. And in this case, it's 65 degrees is what we have it set at, and it's 73 in the building. And so we're using our contactor, we're powering the sides of the contactor, the, the coil, in order to power our outdoor compressor, our outdoor fan motor, and also our indoor fan motor. So that's how air conditioning works now. What's happening here is that the thermostat is always powering our green fan wire to our fan relay and also our yellow wire to our contactor, which will be outside. So our thermostat is what is the switching mechanism in any gas furnace and air conditioning system or air handler. This is the switching mechanism, so I wanna show you how that works. We'll turn this off right here, and then we're gonna remove this face plate and we're using our Diversitec mag jumpers right here or our alligator clips in order to jump out our thermostat terminals. So right here we can uh, jump out from R to G. Now this is an older thermostat and you see that we have our RC and R has a jumper inside the thermostat. Some may have a just a dip switch or a program inside the thermostat, but in this case it's just a little jumper. And so we can jump from R to G and so that just acts as a switch. That's all this thermostat is. And so we can do the same thing from R to W right there. And so remember that our sequencer is not going to power the indoor fan on until say our heat exchanger heats up. But I just wanted to show you how you could use these magnet jumpers to be able to teach how a thermostat works. So you can remove this and I just wanna also show you over on our wiring diagram, we have our thermostat right here. Anytime you have field wiring, you're gonna have this dotted line here. And so over here where you have your power coming in, we have our dotted lines. And so we utilize a wiring diagram legend to know what each of these symbols are. Anytime that we're looking at a wiring diagram in order to interpret the wiring diagram, we have to know what each of these things are. And so CB, that's a circuit breaker, it's a three amp one. So in this case, you see CB is right here and that's connected to our red wire right here. So right here we have a GFCI. This is very important for when your students are troubleshooting, you have a ground fault circuit interrupter. 
So what this does is it monitors the current between the hot and the common. And if there's an imbalance, it's going to open up the electrical circuit as a safety because that means that uh, potentially there's current going through a ground and that could be going through say your student and that would be a danger. So that's why you have a ground fault circuit interrupter as your protection. On this board, let me just give you a quick little tour. Uh, so this piece of sheet metal is the ground for this entire board. And we have our ground wire attached right here to our common. So you got to remember that your 24 volt transformer always has the, the common attached to the ground frame of the HVAC system. So that's almost all the time. And so you can utilize your multimeter on the ground frame, uh, one probe on the ground frame and one probe on the hot wire while you're tracing out your switches. Uh, so here we have a multi-tap transformer. So we have two wires that we're not even using. And so we wanna have those in wire nuts. And you can see that right here on the connection diagram, XFMR. Well, what is that? So we just take a look at our legend and we can see that XFMR is a multi-tap transformer. So anytime that you don't understand something on a wiring diagram, you wanna look over at the legend to determine what that is. So our connection diagram, this is used in order to build this. So if you're a teacher, uh, basically what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be giving the student your plywood, a piece of sheet metal, they can uh, cut and bend that into place and then you're gonna have them screw it down. They can mount all these electrical components on this board with a measurement layout. So we have these over at our website at acservicetech.com in the resource section. So you're gonna use the connection diagram, the, the dual receptacle right here. So this is called a duplex receptacle actually. So that's right there. We have our contactor right here. So that's our contactor, our GFCI, that's right here. We have our, our transformer, that's right here. We have our CB, that's our circuit breaker, right here. We have our, our thermostat right there, our terminal block right here. We have our fan relay, that's right there. Our sequencer is right here. This one is a um, two-section sequencer, but the, the issue with this is we're not using the lower section. We're just using the, the top one due to the timing mechanism. And so you see on the bottom right here of the sequencer, there's a resistor. And so you look at your, your legend right here and you see there's a resistor. So you're heating up, you have a pan heater on the bottom. Anytime you send 24 volts in the bottom of a sequencer, you have a pan heater that's heating up a bimetal disc and it's gonna push up on rods and that's going to connect uh, one of these levels at a time and then it's going to disconnect one of the levels at a time as it cools down. And so that's why you have right here a switch right here. And then you also see that it's based on temperature. The fact that this is open right now between this point and this point, and that it's going to take a temp rise for it to close, you can see that it's a, it's a close on temp rise. And so right here you have on your legend, close on temp rise. So this is typically used for uh, temperature sensors, but in this case we included it on the, the sequencer. Here you have a GPSR, well what's that? You just go right over to your legend, GPSR, general purpose switching relay, that's right here. This is a DPDT relay. And that means that it's double pole, there's one pole there and one pole there, and then it's double throw. So it can throw either way. And so we're actually controlling two circuits on the switching part of this relay right here. So the simple little ones up at the top, we have our M, that's our motor, our light bulb right there. And so, so basically that's, that's how you know what each of the components are. And on a connection diagram, you always have the color wires and where they're attaching to. So if you're going to be building this in the classroom, I would advise that you might start right at the, uh, the thermostat and you have the terminal block, so you might mount this, this, and this, and start wiring them. And we have our power wire into our contactor, maybe put your GFCI in, so you'd start off with those several components first, and then you would move on to your other components. Maybe you would do your high voltage electrical wiring next, uh, or you would do your low voltage electrical wiring to each of these relays. Remember that this sometimes is called a sequencer relay, but it's really not, it has a pan heater at the bottom, so there is not an electromagnetic coil such as in the bottom of this one, this one, and this one. Now, as far as a schematic diagram goes, a schematic diagram, uh, in this case is a ladder diagram. See the ladder, the two sides of the ladder, and right here you have each of the horizontal sections. 
the top part of this is going to be your high voltage and then your lower section is your is your low voltage signified by your 24 volt at your XFMR and so you can see your fan relay coil so you have your your thermostat right here is your thermostat connections here's your terminal block and then basically you have your G going over to your fan relay and then it's connected to your common right here and so that's right here this is your your fan relay coil and here's your common your GPSR coil that's located over in the lower section of this coil right here here you have your cont so that's your contactor and there's a another coil right there so you see your Y connects to one side of the contactor coil and then you have your common wire on the other side and so there it is right there and so this is just simply showing you how this operates and over here your GPSR over here you have to power with your white wire uh, right here over on the coil and then you have your common over on this side so that's going to complete the electrical circuit and when you power this coil your GPSR contacts the normally open set of contacts those are going to close and if you don't know what those are once again you refer to your legend so right here you have your normally open contacts normally open contacts are when this relay is not powered so then they're going to close so anyway, that's how you, you read a wiring diagram. In this case, right here, you have your contact is going to close and then it's going to power your sequencer right here. And so it's going to power this pan heater down here. And then after that pan heater heats up, it's going to push up on the rod. And that's what makes the delay for when this fan motor gets power. So this is your 120 volt hot and you're switching that on and off with your sequencer. It's in the normally open position between here and here. And once that rod pushes up, it's going to close the electrical contacts. So once you take power off of your GPSR over here, what's going to happen is this switch is going to open up. The normally uh, open set of contacts right here are closed when you power the coil. And when you don't power the coil, they're going to open up, which means that you're no longer going to have power at your, your sequencer. And then what's, it's going to cool down. The rods are going to fall and then this is going to open up but it's not going to be right away and that's why your fan motor continues to run even when your light bulb is no longer on so once again schematic diagram you want to look at it quickly to learn how the system operates so if you walk up to an HVAC system that you're not familiar with you can look at the schematic diagram to determine how the system works the connection wiring diagram we use that in order to to wire it and and just to follow the wires you know for the electrical circuit path and then your legend is always just to determine, hey, what is that symbol? What does it mean? Because some manufacturers make up symbols, you know, so you, you don't know what it is. So you got to go over to the legend and, and read up on what it is. OK, so now that we went over these uh, diagrams and once again, these are available over at our website at acservicetech.com in the resource section for free. You can check them out there. Uh, but once we are now done that, I want to show you some troubleshooting with this board and some measurements with this board here. We're going to use our mag jumpers inside our thermostat right here and we're going to connect from R to Y. And so what's going to happen is we have our outdoor air conditioner turning on. But you see that our indoor fan did not turn on. And that's because inside your thermostat during air conditioning mode, R touches both Y and G at the same time. So both the, the R touches both the green and the yellow wire right here. And so you have your, your fan motor running. Instead of these components right here, you may have a control board at the indoor unit. But in this case, we're just using relays. If you have these relays in your, in your service truck, you can typically get a system up and running. Not necessarily a gas furnace. You, you don't want to replace that control board with a bunch of relays. But air conditioning systems, you can typically get these systems running. So air handlers, you can rebuild the insides typically with, with the correct uh, high current uh, contacts for, say, electric strip heaters or, or things like that. And you have to have a high current fan relay in order for the blower motor to turn on but basically what's happening here is we only have this Y wire powered so I'm going to turn our multimeter on and we're going to take our measurements right here so if you're wondering hey why is my blower motor not on right now what you can do is you can just place one probe right on the common and then you can put one right on the the G and so you see you have no voltage but when you put your probe onto the yellow wire we have 27 volts. So you could follow that right right through this, this whole board right here. And so we're right there, 27 volts. 
And so you can check your outdoor unit contactor right between here and here. I'm trying to shuffle around because it's difficult trying to get the uh, camera here. So we've got 27 volts right there. So 24 volts is actually going to be anywhere from, say, 24 to 29 and a half volts coming from the transformer right here. So you see we got 24 volts right there. Now we can just put a probe onto the ground and then we can put one on the hot. We're going to get the same reading, our 27 volts. And if we were to check across this switch right here, so we want to measure power in. So we have power there and we have power there. So we've confirmed that our contactor is closed. We could also take a measurement across here to see if there's any uh, potential difference. And we see that there is zero voltage as far as a difference. If this switch was open, we would see a difference. And so you see we have 120 volts. Now, as well, we could take our hot. We can come down here onto the ground. And so you see we have 123 volts when we have our probe on hot and our ground. Now, that's only if you have a good ground on your HVAC unit, which you should have. So you can take these alligator clips right here, and we can jump across from here to here. And you see our fan's going to turn on. So there's many opportunities here to show your electrical uh, components operating and what a switch is, is doing, essentially. So these alligator clips can also be used at your terminal block over here. And so if we want to turn our, our fan on, we can just go from our green wire to our red wire, just like that. And so we use our alligator jumpers. Now typically on a contactor, you're going to have a cover on this. And you, know, you can press this down in order to turn your um, outdoor air conditioning on, but basically your cover can cover over that. There's a lot of troubleshooting that can be done for each student. So if, if you have, say, 20 students or 10 students, you can set some faults in these ahead of time. And so it could be at your crimp connector or under your contacts in any of these components. Uh, you could have a shorted out coil, but basically what I did with my students is I made sure that they never started pulling wires off. So they're, they have to be able to measure it with their multimeter in order to prove that there's a problem. So let's just go ahead and set up a problem. So it's easy to shut this off. All we have to do is press our, our button right here. We can measure with our, our multimeter. And so we just want to verify that we have no power. And so we can put a piece of rubber between the contacts right there. Now I'm going to set up a troubleshooting fault on this board and we're going to have to determine what that problem is. So this would be as if we're on a service call, and so basically we would want to turn on, say, the heat or the, the fan. We would ask the customer, hey, what's going on with this system? What's the problem? Uh, so we would do that first, then test the system like we're doing right now. We're turning the heat on. We want to make sure that the fan turns on and make sure that the air conditioning turns on as well. All right, so the heat works fine, so that's great. So we want to make sure that this is going to shut off just like it's supposed to shut off. And then after that, we're going to test our fan. And then after that, we're going to test our air conditioning. So that'll show us kind of which pathway to, to start looking for our troubleshooting problem. So we'll turn our fan on now. Our fan is not being powered, it looks like. OK, so, so we see that there's a problem. And so let's now turn on our air conditioning. So now this right now, it's blinking, so that would mean it's going to be, say, a five-minute delay. So instead of doing that, we're just going to pull this cover off. And so now we'll use our magnet jumpers to jump from R to Y in order to turn our air conditioning on. Remember that it's not going to turn on our indoor fan anyway. It's just going to turn on our outdoor unit because your thermostat normally connects R to both G and yellow. So since we're just connecting R to Y, it's only going to... to power this circuit over here for your outdoor air conditioning to turn on. So it seems to be that our indoor fan is not running and since we know that our sequencer and our general purpose fan relay are used for during heating in this in this uh, wiring right here, we know that our issue is either at our fan relay or it's our low voltage to the fan relay or it's the high voltage going to the, to the fan. And so what we want to do is we're going to start from here and move this way. So what we'll first do is we'll measure from our G to our ground, and we see that we do have 29 volts. Now let's just verify that we do also, yep, so 29 volts. Okay, so then we can move through our terminal block over to here, and then we can once again check on our ground, and we have just about 29 volts, and then we can check right here. 
And so we should have uh, 29 volts right here, and we do not. So that's our problem right here. We must have some issue with our common wire. And so let's check over at this common. So at this common, we have 29 volts still, so 28.5. So there must be some issue with this, this wire from here to here because we do have our 29 volts anytime that we're touching ground or our, our common. So our issue is right here. If our issue was not there, so it's in this wire right here. So let's just see, maybe it's, you know, it's an intermittent issue. So I don't know if you can hear that clicking or not. So that's a problem inside one of our crimp connectors. So we would go ahead and replace this wire or cut it and add on a new crimp connector. So we can see automatically right now we have our 120 volts through. And if we wanted to follow that, we could just put one tab on our common and we could put our other all over here, 120, 120. And then obviously our fan's running. So we do have 120 here and we have our common over there. So we could measure 120 volt right there. So that's how you troubleshoot. You kind of just, you want to place your one probe on your common for your 24 volts, and then you're just kind of moving it around to see where you're losing uh, your electrical circuit, where it's open at. And when it's open, you no longer have voltage, and that's where your problem is. And so it could be maybe even just the component itself. If we had 24 volts right here, and we measured, and we had 120 volts here, but we did not have it here, then that would mean that there's a problem inside our component. So if you want to learn more about troubleshooting any of these components, we have our general purpose relay, uh, we have our sequencer, our fan relay, and contactor videos all down in the description section below, and we have a bunch of thermostat wiring, how to trace down a low voltage shore, and make sure you check out how to build this board and utilize this in the classroom to teach HVAC students electrical wiring, component identification, wiring diagrams, and troubleshooting. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.